So this is an RTX 3060 V2, which is an LHR edition. And the specific card that I have here is the Palit Dual model. And this GPU has a 12 gigabyte of VRAM and it is using the GDDR6 memory. And the specific GPU that I am going to test out later, which is this GPU, has a Samsung memory in it. The TDP of this GPU comes in at 170 watts and it takes only a single 8 pin, which you can see here, which means powering this GPU for your rig is going to be fairly straightforward. All you need is one VGA or 8 pin PCIe strand coming out from your power supply with a splitter. One end of the splitter will be plugging into this GPU and another end will be going into your riser. I'd like to mention that this is the V2 of the RTX 3060 whereby it is completely LHR. When the RTX 3060 first came out, it was not being labeled LHR, but it is somewhat limited in Ethereum mining. But after that, many people have got the developer driver, uh, X16 riser and HDMI plug to unlock the full hash rate from an RTX 3060. But this is not that version, so this version is completely LHR. So I'll be testing this GPU on Ethereum mining, Ergo, Ravencoin and Flux on Windows. After that, we will be touching about a little bit about profitability and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this RTX 3060 for crypto mining. And without further ado, let me put this GPU on my test bench and you will see the results in a bit. So here's a quick disclaimer. Understand that each and every GPU is going to be different. Even if you have the same exact same model as what I have right over here, your overclock settings will be totally different. And also Silicon Lottery, some cards can handle much higher overclock settings than the average. So my overclock settings may or may not be the best or suitable for your GPU. So overclock at your own risk and just use it as, you know, a reference on what you can expect from this GPU if you decide to pick one up. So with that, get out of the way. Let's move on to the first coin, which is Ethereum. With stock clocks, I was getting around 31 megahertz per second at about 160 watts mining Ethereum. And just like when I was testing the RTX 3060 Ti last week, the LHR kept kicking in at stock clocks. So as usual, the first thing to do is raising the memory clock. At plus 1600 on the memory clock, I was getting on average 38 MHz per second at 165 to 169 watts. Dropping the core clock did not help in reducing the power consumption nor hash rate improvement in our case. So of course, the next logical step to do is locking the core clock. I tried multiple settings for the lock core clock with both MSI Afterburner and also with T-Rex Miner. The most ideal setting that I have tried is a lock core clock of 1350 and 1600 on the memory clock. With this, I got around 33.5 MHz per second at around 96 to 103 watts at the software. Now I know that LOL Miner has released a newer version of Miner which claim to unlock up to 78.2% for NVIDIA LHR GPU with the GDDR6 memory. So I did give it a try, but unfortunately, with the same settings that I was able to get only 33 MHz per second to not more than 33.5 MHz per second with the same overclock settings that I have used in T-Rex Miner. I did allow ample time to let the miner tune the card, but unfortunately, I was not getting more hash rate compared to using our good old T-Rex miner. So if anyone knows what's the workaround to unlock the claim LHR unlock rate with LOL miner in Windows, let me know in the comment section below. With the same settings, I tried dual mining Ethereum and Alifium and let the miner run for a good 20 minutes. With this, I got an average of 35.5 MHz per second for Ethereum and about 450 MHz per second on Alifium. And it is drawing 
134 to 138 watts while dual mining with the latest version of T-Rex Miner. So I guess using a little bit more power does allow us to gain extra 2 MHz per second here for Ethereum as well. As for Ergo, the algorithm is also being targeted by the LSR but not as pronounced. However, from my experience, a lot of LSR cards, at least those on my hand, are limited by LSR as well. So first, let's look at the mining performance at stock clock. The miner starts with around 69 MHz per second and slowly increase to 104 MHz per second at about 144 watts. Next, I directly bump the memory clock to somewhat the ceiling of this card and drop the core. The hash rate drop. From here, we can already tell that this specific card is affected by LHR as well. In the past, dropping the power limit will sort of unlock the hash rate out, but for this testing, it seems like this does not work as well. With this, we need to set the LHR unlock inside the T-Rex Miner batch file. T-Rex Miner recommends a good starting point for GPUs with GDDR6 non-Hynix memory of LHR91. But to me, starting at 91 and waiting it to tune up once it is stable might be a little bit slower. So with the intention to let T-Rex Miner does the job in tuning the LHR, I set at 99. Purposely let the LHR kick in and allow T-Rex Miner to tune it until it finds a stable LHR settings. Then we can know what's the highest stable LHR setting this card could potentially achieve. When the LHR unlock runs a little stable at 97, I started playing with the overclock and undervolt settings. But I'm totally aware that LHR unlock at 97 is probably going to be unstable as well and I'm pretty sure it will drop in a bit. So of course, I started to undervolt by locking the core clock and I get mixed results doing so with MSI Afterburner. At this point of time, the LHR tune is sitting at 94. So I went ahead and set the LHR tune to 94 and my clock settings inside T-Rex Miner batch file and I tried start with lock core clock of 1400 and of course 1500 on the memory clock. One thing about T-Rex Miner is that it will give you kind of like a theoretical hash rate that it can achieve with the given overclock, undervolt and LHR tune setting. I was getting 111 MHz per second at 94 watts with lock core clock of 1400. So I want to see what happened when I lower the core clock. I went ahead and set the lock core clock to 1300 and I was getting lower hash rate at 104 MHz per second at 88 to 89 watts. Efficiency wise, it is actually the same. Next, I bump up the core clock to 1450 and let's see if we could get higher hash rate at the similar efficiency. So, I got 115 MHz per second at 98 to around 104 watts. Efficiency wise, it is basically the same and I'm happy about this result. What I did is letting the miner run for a little longer and see if it is stable. After about 1 hour and 15 minutes of mining ergo, the LHR tune went up to 96 and it is hashing at 117.7 to 118.1 MHz per second at 99 watts mining ergo. So pretty great result we have here and I'm very comfortable to start the batch file with LHR tune 96. At stock settings, this GPU is getting 20.93 to 20.94 MHz per second mining Ravencoin with the Kapow algorithm. And it is drawing 169 to 170 watts, which is the TDP of this card. Bumping the memory to plus 1000, I was getting 23.7 MHz per second at the same wattage. Bumping the MEM to plus 1300, I was getting higher hash rate coming in at 24.5 MHz per second at the same power consumption again. Next, I try bumping the core. I straight away at 150 on the core clock and I got a rejected share a couple of seconds after I increased the core clock to plus 150. Despite that, I was getting slightly higher hash rate coming in at around 24.63 to 24.65 MHz per second mining Ravencoin. 
I closed the minor and reduced the core by 50 to plus 100 on the core. I was getting 24.6 to 24.64 megahash per second at the same wattage. So minor loss in hash rate, but it's fine. Bumping up the MEM to plus 1500, I got 25.1 to 25.2 megahash per second at again full TDP. Next, we have to reduce the power draw by setting the power limit. And as usual, the more we limit the power, the better efficiency we will be getting in expense of slightly lower hash rate and also cooler GPU. Setting the power limit to 90%, I was getting around 24.8 megahash per second at 152 watts. Efficiency number was 164 kilohash per watt. At 80% power limit, the efficiency went up as expected, which is at 172 kilohash per watt. Hash rate was 23.23 to 23.36 megahash per second, drawing 135 watts in the software. Dropping the power limit to 70%, I was getting around 21.24 megahash per second at 118 watts. Efficiency number was at 180 kilohash per watt. When I dropped the power limit to 60%, things were going backward. The efficiency worsened to 174 kilohash per watt, and despite using only 101 watts, we were getting less than 18 megahash per second at around 17.5 megahash per second only. After that, I did try 65 on the power limit. I was getting back 180 kilohash per watt efficiency, but again, at the same efficiency with 70% power limit, I would prefer 70% power limit over the 65 power limit. Again, you know, seeing things below 20 megahash per second is a little less comfortable when you know that it can do like 25 megahash per second at max. So just to test things out, I tried 75% power limit. The efficiency number was around 175 kilohash per watt. So I think somewhere around 70% power limit is really the sweet spot right over here. Around 21 megahash per second mining Ravencoin or any proc power based algorithm consuming 118 watts. Next, I tested mining flux. As usual, the first thing that I did is to see which miner gives me higher hash rate. For this test, I tried G miner and Mini Z miner. At stock settings, G miner was giving me 37.5 to 38.9 solution per second at pretty much the TDP. As for Mini Z miner, I was getting 37.7 to 39.3 sols per second at stock settings, drawing close to the TDP of this GPU as well. So I continued this test with the Mini Z Miner. First, I bumped the MEM to plus 1000. I was getting 39.9 to around 40.3 solution per second at the same power consumption. So in this case, bumping the memory did help. So I went ahead and bumped the MEM to plus 1200, I was getting around 39.4 to 40.3 solution per second as well. So it seems like too much of the memory clock is also not really useful. In order to reconfirm this, I would say, hypothesis or assumption that I made, I set the mem back to plus 1000 and let it run for a good 5 minutes again. I got higher hash rate at 40.3 solution per second to 41.35 solution per second. And I think this is a little bit strange, but nonetheless, I'll stick with plus 1000 on the mem and start increasing the core clock. I added 100 on the core clock and I was getting slightly higher hash rate at 41.2 to 41.6 sol per second. Again, the same power consumption right over here. Adding another 50 on the core increased the hash rate to around 42.3 to 42.8 solution per second. Adding another 25 to plus 175 on the core clock, I was getting less hash rate at 41.9 to 42.7 sols per second. I dialed the core back to plus 150 and I got only 41.2 to 41.8 sols per second. And then I begin power limiting. At 90% power limit, I got around 40.6 to 41 sols per second at 152 watts. Efficiency came in at 0.25 sol per watt. Dropping the power limit to 80%, I got 38.9 to 39.8 solution per second at 136 watts. Efficiency improved to 0.26 solution per watt. So of course, I went lower on the power limit to 70%. I got 37.1 to around 38 solution per second at 119 watts. 
efficiency came in at 0.26 to 0.27 sols per watt. So here's when dropping the power limit started creating some diminishing return in terms of efficiency. At 60% power limit, we were getting just 34.8 to 35.5 sol per second at 102 watts. Efficiency stays at 0.27 sols per watt. I also tried locking the core clock at 1600. Basically, the efficiency stays the same. So to me, I'm quite happy between 70 to 80% power limit. You do not lose too much hash rate while dropping the power usage. And the amount of wattage consumed is fine and easy to manage. So goes the heat. But of course, if you are rigging a couple of GPUs and do not have ample space in between your GPUs, dropping a little more power would make your life a little easier when it comes to managing the heat. So again, we are in a situation whereby discussing about profitability is kind of awkward and to some people it might be pointless because, you know, Ethereum will be moving into proof of stake soon, granted there is no delay. Of course, miners would hope that to be delayed. So as Ethereum goes away, the network hash rate from GPU miners will be distributed to other coins that are profitable like Ethereum Classic, Ravencoin, Ergo, Flux and so on. By then, the profitability will be very different compared to what you are going to see right now. At a point of recording, the most profitable coin to mine for this RTX 3060 is Ergo, which is $1.79 per day as of now after electricity of $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour, partly because we are really getting a great hash rate out from this GPU on the auto light cost algorithm, which is great because I love Ergo when it comes to managing the heat compared to those proc power based coin and also Flux. Ethereum comes in at second place with $1.60 per day. Then we have a couple of those proc power based coins, then Flux. Profitability for dual mining Ethereum and Elithium at the point of recording is a little bit awkward, I would say. It comes in at $1.54 per day after electric city. So less than mining Ethereum alone, probably due to higher power consumption and low Elithium price. But again, things may change. Profitability changes every now and then. So what's my final thought about this RTX 3060 for mining? Now I have been actively monitoring the pricing of this GPU in my region and I found out that this GPU price is rather competitive. GPU prices have been coming down for the past couple of weeks, but because of crypto prices going up as well this week, the prices of, say, the RTX 3060 Ti have been going up by about 10% at least in my region, starting from around $650, US whereby this RTX 3060 can be found for less than $450. US so depending on how much you can get this GPU, the dollar per hash might make more sense compared to say getting the RTX 3060 Ti and even the RTX 3070 because you know the pricing for the RTX 3070 is just absurd in my region. It, it was just like $50 less than the RTX 3070 Ti and it makes no sense for me to get the 3070. So there you have it, the hash rates, overclock and undervolt settings for this GPU, the RTX 3060 LHR or V2. If you want to see more content like this, do not forget to drop a like and subscribe to my channel. The more people subscribe to my channel after watching this kind of hash rate video, it is an indication for me that a lot of you like this kind of content and I would make more videos just like this one. With that said, thanks for watching and I will see you when I see you. Peace out.